Come on, Mr. Gollum, it's time for your pool party. Hello there, and welcome back to Rogue Season 5. It's time, my friends, time to start getting the villagers organized. What does that mean? Well, first it means it's time for that age-old bit of passive-aggressive, or, or maybe in this case it's aggressive-passive, or, or maybe it's just aggressive. Whatever it is, it's time we turn some villagers into zombies and then pretend we're the hero by curing them. Totally normal stuff like that. Why? Because Minecraft! That's why! Luckily enough, this angry young man wandered into the village last night and I was able to trap him inside with a boat. This nice little cottage is currently unused, so we may as well put him up here for a while. With all the golems running around, there's no danger to the villagers, but there's a lot of danger to our new friend here, so I need to make sure he doesn't get out. And all I need to do is break him out of that boat while leaving him in the minecart. All right, right here should do it. Oh, whiffed it. All right, let's try back here. Um, no, oh, whiffed it again. No, oh, 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 mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. Oh, oh, crap! I can't let him get out. Come on, over here, over here. Get, get into my car. Get into my car. Get into my car. Here we go. Okay, okay. And that is how professionals do it, or, or at least Gregor's. All right, we've got a villager in here. Let's uh, get this guy over here by the villager and see what happens. All right, uh, well, that's not going to work, is it? Okay, let's get him back in the corner. Come on. And uh, let's uh, redo this. There we go. Okay, that works. Now let's get him over by the cobblestone. All right, there we go. Now let's get this guy over by the villager. All right, let's have some fun. Um, hello, he's right there. Come on, you, you, you can hit him. He's right there. It's okay. Don't be shy. Come on. <sighs> I guess he can't hit him because he's in the mine cart. All right, fine, fine. Let's redo this. And through the magic of editing, the angry young man is now behind a wall of glass. The villager is over here in the corner and all we have to do now is push a button and the villager will go riding through the wall of glass and into the room with the zombie. And as everyone knows, because of the physics of Minecraft, glass doesn't cause damage to villagers even when it's inside their head. Because Minecraft! Due to the space limitations, I had to put the button out here on the wall because well, I'm a professional. You know, I'm still testing all this out, but it appears to be working. And we now have a sick friend to heroically cure. Don't worry, little buddy. I've got just what you need. Once I get a few of these guys cured, I'll see what I can do to put that button inside the house somewhere, instead of out by the bushes. Now, for those who have never cured a villager before, all it takes is to smack them square in the face with a bit of tough love and a potion of weakness. Don't worry, it's not real glass, it's sugar glass, like in the movies. And then you force an apple dipped into molten gold down their throat. After you hear the sound of the medicine sizzling away at their insides, all you have to do is stand back and watch them heroically from a distance. Don't let the shakes worry you, it's all part of the healing process. They will thank you later. And speaking of thank yous, their thanks come in the form of much lower prices. Now if this price still isn't enough for you, you could re-zombify them again, but here on the Roguecraft server, we only allow you to get benefits from the first curing. It gets a little too OP if everything is bought and sold for one emerald. As far as I'm concerned, mending for one emerald is all I could ask for. Now I just need to get this guy back into the villager bunkhouse and get all the rest of the librarians cured of their zombie afflictions that I haven't given them quite yet. Once that's done, I'll start working on individual housing for each of the librarians. Aside from the mistakes that were made here, 
I thought it was kind of funny that some of the librarians somehow gained armor when they were converted to zombies. Just appears out of thin air for some reason. Anyway, I just thought it worth mentioning. I didn't know that happened, so maybe you didn't know that happened either. Or I could just be the only guy out here not knowing this, these things happen because he never plays with villagers. Anyway, armor or not, let's get this guy back in the house and cured up. And there it goes. Just vanishes back into the thin air when he's cured. You know, it, it's probably a good thing that he has armor with all the times that I've accidentally shot one of these guys with my bow. Maybe now this one will survive long enough to be healed the next time one of those workplace accidents happens. And with all the books I've been collecting, it's time to set up some sort of basic bookshop so that they're available to everyone else on the server. Nothing too fancy at this point, just a few bookshelves, maybe a barrel or chest or two. May as well add in some of these chiseled bookshelves just for the aesthetic of it. I don't plan on actually putting them to use as the containers for the enchanted books. I mean, I like the idea of a bookshelf that can have books added to it, but only six books is a little limiting for a shop. Anyway, I'm not going for anything too fancy here. I'll be sure to come back and fancy it up later once I have more books to put on sale. Right now, I just have some of the early day basics like mending, unbreaking, feather falling, the game changer and chance. The others will be added as I find the villagers who sell them. And we're back at the village and checking on if the iron farm is working. Now, I say farm, but all the iron golem spawning is just a byproduct of the villager bunkhouse. It was never really intended to be a farm, but if they're going to spawn in, I may as well make it work for me. All I've really done is place moss carpet around the house, and, and well, there we go. It seems like it might actually be working. Next up is villager housing. Okay, so the main idea of the villager housing is to come up with some design that kind of gives you the feel of one of the small houses that naturally spawns into the game, while giving them a bit of an upgrade. A little style to go with those small, efficient house designs. These houses will be for the librarian, so I can get them out of the bunkhouse and more easily get the books I want without having to mill around in a crowd of villagers. The houses will only need to be big enough to hold their workstation, a bed, a bookcase, and maybe some flowers outside the window, Something a villager would be proud to call home and not just some hole in a wall that, that they can't even move around in. Now the second idea for these houses is they will all be the same basic design, but each house will use a different block palette. Like every villager has the same house, but they all decided to paint them different colors. Hopefully the shape of the house will tie them all together and make them feel part of a larger community without every house essentially looking the same as every other house. That's going to be kind of a theme for the whole village. Have each house or building look different while also still feeling like it's part of the greater whole and not look out of place. That's the hope anyway. Only time will tell if I can achieve it. Now, it should be said, this is the kind of build I like to do. I always find the bigger builds to be a struggle. I mean, too many things for my brain to focus on for me to feel like I'm getting anywhere. I mean, the mega builds just feel like work. They're not because they're huge, but because every step along the way feels like I'm swimming against the current. But these smaller designs can be fun. I like to see what I can come up with to do something that realistically a thousand other people out there have done and yet still look different enough that it feels fresh. These days, it's hard to make even the big builds stand out from each other. Anyway, whether I achieve any of these goals is up to you, but my main goal in anything I build is that I like it. If I like it, I'm good. I can be pretty picky when I want to be, and, and little things will stick in my head and bug me for weeks if I don't do something about them. So if I can come out the other side actually doing something and not wanting to tweak this or that aspect of it, then I've done good. And with the power of editing, we have our first librarian safely trapped, safely housed in a nice little bungalow by the sea. 
What more could he ask for? But before we move on to the next house, let's take a moment to look over the design. It kind of uses the standard villager house as a base structure with a more interesting roof shape, some bushes, flower boxes outside the window, some nice contrast between shape and color. I really like how this turned out. Like like just about everything I do, it, it was all designed on the fly and I, I think it turned out pretty good. I, what do you think? One thing I do need to change though, is I need the lectern by the front door so the librarian will come stand by the door to use his workstation and not hide away in the back of the hut where I can't reach him. But that little tweak aside, I think this will work. Now to try the design with a different block palette. And with the magic of editing, let's now take a look at all the little bungalows that were built for the librarians. Here, of course, is the first bungalow that you watched me build. Sandstone, cherry wood, and oak palette. This one uses a granite birch cherry wood. Yeah, I really do like the cherry wood texture. It's, it works. And while we're here, let's talk to one of the citizens of this village and see what he thinks of his new house. So, d do you like your little bungalow? D I mean, you, you, you like the bungalow? It, it's better than the, bu the bunkhouse, isn't it? Yes? It's better than bunk. No? Yes? Nope. Just gonna stand in your bed, are you? Well, all right. Well, I'll take that as a as, as you like it. And over here we have the calcite diorite. Uh, what is that? Spruce, spruce combo. That works pretty well. And this one, a uh, red nether brick, birch. Not birch. That's a bamboo. It it, it kind of works. I I I like it. And this one over here we have. The red sandstone, cherry, and nether brick. And here we have the copper, prismarine, and acacia palette. They all work in their own way, I think. I mean, I like the base design, and I think it's kind of cool being able to see all the variations next to each other along Librarian Row. And over here we have a custom cherry tree placed in the center of the pathway to bring a little touch of nature to the whole thing. I wish I could do some sort of custom path around the village, but because of the Iron Golem farm, I have to use path blocks in this area. And over here, I want to do some kind of koi pond thing with bushes and fences. That'll be for next time. And, and this is the enchanting house. It, it's kind of served me since day one, but I really need to expand it. I, I've got a lot of armor that I've brought back from the end and a lot of enchantment, enchanting books and... I need some kind of storage for all the extra books, and so I'm just going to expand the house out to the left, I think, I, but that's all for next time, too. I, I don't have time for that today. But as far as the new houses go, I, th I think things turned out pretty good. But be sure to let me know what you think in the comments below. But for now, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like if you feel so inclined, but until next time, I have been Gregor, and this has been... Rowcraft. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, always try and find a way to have some fun. See ya!